All good. Perfect. Welcome, everyone. But since we have an international audience in here today, we have from Spain, we have from Argentina, we have from Malta. Lovely. Currently, I'm in Toronto, Canada, Estonia, Portugal, nice. USA, lovely. It's the international trading community. South Africa, Netherlands, lovely. Great, great. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Um, oh, before I um, get into any any of the any of the sections of the stream, I'd like to uh, make sure that I mention nothing in this video or stream is um, to be considered any financial advice. It's all for educational purposes. Um, please make sure you do your own research before making any decisions when it comes to trading or investing. And uh, whether it's trading with or without leverage, it's of high risk in general. So please be cautious um, and gen generally don't trade or invest what you can't afford to lose. Now, one thing to mention um, is some of the principles that I might go over today could overlap with principles you might be familiar with or heard of for those who are already traders and, and, and already uh, learned about trading from resources such as ICT, uh, SMC, or Smart Money Concepts, and others. They've done a great job in labeling various trading principles, and the communities that they have are great. Uh, but please note that while what I might explain overlaps with some of these terms, these are general market principles and concepts. So I might have my own variations as I explain, just like any professional uh, a trader. So please pay attention to everything I explain the way I explain it in this stream, as it will be helpful for you once I explain the trades AI signals and indicator, which is in the other uh, part of this stream. I'll try to make it uh, straight to the point as much as I can. There's a lot to cover in this stream. I want this stream to be very helpful for anyone, whether you are a, a beginner trader, um, new to trading, you've never traded before, new to trading, or if you are a professional trader or with, with any uh, type of experience with trading. So I'll try to squeeze in as much as I can. I obviously you can always rewatch uh, um, parts of the stream as you see uh, needed, but I'll try to squeeze as much as possible in this stream. And we'll have time for uh, questions and answers at the end of the uh, stream. Okay, so let's get started. Um, this is Hadi Aladdin. I'm, one, I'm a co-founder of Trades AI, um, and uh, the al the algorithms uh, that power Trades AI, indicator signals, and everything that we offer in Trades AI, um, I developed over the past uh, ten years, pretty much of professionally trading the financial markets, be it uh, um, crypto, stocks, indices, forex. Um, I've tried everything in the book when it comes to trading, you name it, I've tried it. Um, and the purpose of Trades AI is to give you, um, in a nutshell, what you really need as a tool set, toolkit, to become a potentially profitable trader. Um, in the trading game, there is no guarantees, obviously, of profitability. It's all a probabilities game. This is one thing to keep in mind as we go over. Uh, everything in today's stream. But what we try in trading is we try to uh, stack the odds in our favor so that we win in this market, which is a very sophisticated market globally with lots of very sophisticated people as well as algorithms and bots that are trying to win as well. So literally we are as traders competing against some of the smartest brains out there uh, on earth. So keep that in mind as you trade. Uh, whether when you win or when you lose, it's always something to keep in mind 
um, as you trade the markets. I've, I've, I've been a software engineer for the past, pretty much since I was 11 year old, I was coding, but uh, my, my profession is a, is a computer engineer. So um, I, I build algorithms, I build software, and that helped me obviously build uh, the algorithms, uh, uh, mixing my trading experience as well as software engineering and computer science experience um, in delivering these products. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start with um, a quick introduction of how to use our website before we dive into the, the trading principles. I'll just go over our website, how to order different subscriptions very quickly. I'll keep it short. And then we'll dive into uh, an introduction, a quick introduction of TradingView, which is the tool or the platform that we use for uh, charting and analyzing the markets and making some decisions on where to buy and sell. And then I'll dive deeper into the trading principles on how to read the market, how to read the chart, how to read everything you see on these charts. And, and then finally, I'll dive deep into uh, the most important part of the stream, which is the trades AI signals and indicator and how to use them, how they work, um, and how to combine them together, or if you use them separately, uh, and how to use them to be profitable, hopefully, in these markets. Now this works for anything. So whether you, you trade cryptocurrencies, stocks, indices, uh, Forex, commodities, metals, gold, etc., uh, what we are going to be explaining today and our tools and products work for any uh, of these different asset class classes. Okay, so here I have uh, the website uh, loaded. And what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, explain how to um, buy or how to purchase your subscription. So if you go to tradesai.com, I'm just gonna refresh the page in here. This is how it looks like. I'll just accept the cookies in here so that the, the website loads properly. And there you go. So um, you can easily click on start trading in here to see the different plans. Um, we also have resources section where we explain how to use trades AI. We have some uh, interesting blogs as well. We write from time to time. Uh, our team writes some really insightful um, blog posts that you can check as well in the resources tab. Uh, but you can go to products or click on start trading and it will take you to the page where you can order your subscription. Uh, here we have two videos explaining the signals and the indicator. Make sure you go over them as well. Um, and we have from time to time some offers going on, discounts, etc. So uh, if you scroll down, you'll see uh, the different plans that we have. So um, these are different plans we got. You can buy the, the indicator on its own, the elite indicator. This does not come with signals on Telegram. So if you go for this plan, it's just the indicator on TradingView, which I'll go over in the stream. If you go with this plan, it's only the VIP crypto signals, doesn't have the indicator. So it's just signals on Telegram for when to buy and sell for cryptocurrencies. If you go with this one, it's not just crypto, it's all different assets. So metals, commodities, indices, etc., cryptos as well included. But again, this does not include the indicator. And finally, you have the ultimate bundle, which is everything. So this has the indicator and as well as all asset signals. So if you want everything uh, we explained today and the really powerful uh, toolkit to go for, this is the ultimate bundle is your way to go, okay? You just click on subscribe and we'll take you to the payment page. Uh, you can switch between monthly and yearly. So let me go back very quickly. So monthly and yearly, obviously the yearly annual pricing is discounted. So if you can afford to go for an annual subscription, it will give you a lot, a massive discount. Uh, I think it's between 35 to 50% off, depending on, on what deals we have going on. Um, but yeah, you can go for yearly and subscribe or monthly, and that's it. After you subscribe and put your payment details, uh, you could pay using credit cards or debit cards, or you could use uh, our partner, CryptoChill, which is to pay using cryptocurrencies. So if you want to pay using Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, whatever it is, um, that's the option to go to. You can go for crypto chill. 
And that's it. So that's how you go for the uh, subscriptions. And once you subscribe, you'll have more instructions on what to do next and how to install the signals on Telegram. Uh, links to that, as well as the indicator, will add you to the indicator. So you'll be able to add it into your charts. And I'll go over that uh, shortly. Uh, please make sure to check your junk folder in the email because sometimes our emails might land there. Uh, so please, whenever you sign up, uh, check your junk, mark it as safe sender so that future emails come to your inbox. Um, in case you don't receive an email or it's delayed or anything, please reach out to support at tradesai.com. So you can go to support in here or just email us uh, to support at tradesai.com. Keep in mind, we have the FAQs on the website as well. So a lot of the questions that we get might have answers for in the FAQ. Uh, we also have a Telegram uh, support bot, chat bot, so you can ask it questions. So you can you can go to on the Telegram once you go to our free Telegram group as well, uh, trades under underscore AI on Telegram. Uh, that's our free Telegram group for signals. Uh, there is a link. Uh, as well to the Telegram chatbot, which has also some of the FAQs. So you have different ways to ask questions, uh, but in case you don't have your answer, feel free to, to email us at support at tradesai.com. Okay, so that's it for the website. Let's now dive into the other section, which is trading view. So, so I, I'll, I'll assume I'll assume people are not familiar with TradingView at first, so I'll do a quick introduction or a quick dive uh, into TradingView, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive deeper and deeper into trading uh, principles. Let me take a look quickly at the chat if there's any questions before I keep going. Okay, we're good. If anyone has any questions at any moment, please feel free to type it in the chat. So you can type it now if you want. Sometimes I might take a look during the stream. Um, or at the very end, we will have the Q&A section. So feel free to save it to later. Or if you want something on the spot, feel free to type it in the chat as well. OK. So now let's dive into uh, the trading view. Uh, if you don't mind, just give me just one minute. I'll just. Uh, switch between the tabs that I have in here. Okay, so uh, TradingView is, as I mentioned, it's the software that we use to read the charts and analyze the markets. It's one of the uh, very popular softwares out there, web-based software, but they also have a mobile application that you can use. You can just go to tradingview.com and uh, sign up and you'll be able to get a free subscription. They have a free subscription, which is good enough for everything that we do uh, pretty much uh, uh, in this stream. But if you go for their premium subscription, it's a very powerful uh, uh, tool to even go for their premium subscription. So, but a free, a free subscription is good enough for tradingview.com. So what I'll do is I'll quickly go over um, uh, how to set up the chart the way that I personally use it. By default, it starts with green and red candles. So the default settings, if you go to right click on the chart and then uh, go to settings. Um, the default settings are like this. This is how you look. It looks like red and green candles, uh, and then you have the volume candles at the bottom. Uh, what I like to do is I change those to match a better psychology performance. Which means with trading, you are under pressure in psycho psychologically, so you don't want any distraction. You don't want any uh, uh, extra things to make you change your decision. And one of these things is the color of the candles. Okay, when you see red, it's like you panic. When you see green, it's like fine. So to change that, this is what I do. I go to settings, 
and then I change, I go to canvas, and then I, ch I change those settings for, for background, I just make it solid. And for color, I like to make it the third gray one in here, first one. And then for grid lines, I disable them. None, so no grid lines. And then I go to uh, symbol, and then I change the colors of the candles. So with the colors of the candles, I'll go with uh, uh, white or one of those white colors for the green one. And for the red one, I'll go for one of the blue ones, any of the blue colors, okay? Uh, I do it for all of them and I disable the borders. So I just do white, blue, white, blue for the wick and for the body, I disable the borders and that's it. Um, I'm in Toronto, so my time zone should be in Toronto. So but feel free, make sure you put your time zone according to where you are, because then your the time frame will, will, will be different on the charts. And that's pretty much the main things you need to do. I have it saved here as a template. After I do my settings, I can save it as a template. So I'll just click on it, this one in here. I'll just quickly change it for me. Let me just, again, make sure I have that color, as you said, there you go. Okay, perfect. So that's that's how you uh, change the settings, mainly. Now, another thing that I do is, I personally, um, for this stream, I'm not gonna use the volume uh, chart in here or the volume candles. So you can hide it or you can remove it. So or we will focus on price action and market structure for this um, for this uh, stream. Okay, so uh, so to far, to uh, let me take a step back just to make sure we we um, people know how to get there into the chart. So if you go to tradingview.com, you hover the mouse over products, and then you go to super charts. That's how you open the charts or simply use the search menu to find an asset, uh, type the symbol, for example, uh, XAU USD for gold, for example, or BTC SD, et cetera, et cetera. So this is how you find symbols and you click on it and it will open the chart for you, okay? Um, one thing to mention about charts is we have logarithmic scale and linear scale. This is very. This is a very important concept when it comes to trading to differentiate between both. By default, it's on linear. So by default, your charts will be linear charts. Uh, personally, I like to trade logarithmic scales one. Most of the professional traders, uh, bots, etc., and algorithms rely on the linear scale more than. Uh, sorry, the logarithmic scale more than the linear. Scale. Uh, but make sure you understand the difference between them. Uh, in a nutshell, linear is the price uh, value on the chart. Logarithmic is linear. Logarithmic changes the chart the way it looks based on ratios. Now, to be able to understand this, as we explained, let me go to Bitcoin, for example, BTC USD chart, index chart, and I switch to the, let's say the uh, weekly chart, for example. This is Bitcoin on the weekly chart. So this is, let me switch to the linear first. So this is the linear chart, okay? Linear chart looks like this. So it does not quantify how big of a move this in terms of ratio. So when you look at the chart, you think this is a huge move versus these are nothing, okay? Um, while if you switch to logarithmic, it puts things in perspective. So now you understand that when price moved, from let's say $10,000 for the Bitcoin to around $70,000 or so, this is an equivalent move to this move from here to here, ratio wise, okay, from here to here. So this puts things in perspective for you because then it doesn't matter what the price is, what we care about when it comes to trading is ratios. So when you buy something and it, it doubles in price, your money, whatever you bought, whatever you put in that asset doubles in value, okay? So if you invested $1,000 in Bitcoin and Bitcoin doubled in price uh, in a few years, let's say, your $1,000 that you invested becomes $2,000. So it doesn't matter if Bitcoin went from 30K to 60K per Bitcoin, what matters is that it doubled. 
So logarithmic scale gives you that perspective. Okay, it, it, it easily allows you to see that with your eye. Okay, versus linear, which kind of you lose that pretty much. We'll keep uh, uh, logarithmic for this video just because uh, it's easier for us when it comes to uh, executing trades and understanding charts. Okay, so what I'm doing in here is I'm changing the time frame. When I click on this, uh, I switch to the weekly. If I go to the hourly, it switches to the hourly chart, which means each candle, this is called a candle, 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 each candle is a uh, one hour, one hour, one hour. So price could play within it for one hour and then it, the hour ends and then another hour, another hour, another hour. So this is called the time frame. So you can switch between the time frames if you want to see different perspective for the asset. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to go over everything very quickly just to make sure everyone understands the general terms before I dive into the details and the, uh, the more advanced stuff in the stream. Uh, you can change your candle type from here. Trading view has a lot of different types. By default, we use candles. Let's type in here. Uh, I think for the premium accounts from Trading View, they introduced this new one, the time price opportunity. Uh, I'm not going to dive deep into it, but it's a very powerful tool for those who rely on volume analysis as well. So a lot of professional traders use uh, TPO, time, um, a price opportunity chart, and it has also the volume profile in here. So um, it shows you each candle or each session as a, uh, a TPO uh, session, okay, or candle. Very powerful for those who rely on volume analysis. Okay, we're gonna switch back to candle for this stream. We might explain these in future streams or in the VIP streams, but for now we'll focus on regular market structure. Okay. Uh, a lot of features in TradingView, I'm not going to dive into all of them. You can set alerts if you want at different price levels so that whenever it hits it, you'll get an email or a sound notification or mobile notification. That's called alerts. Uh, there's a replay mode if you're on premium account. You can pick any place in the chart and replay it. So that way you can literally see how price moved. And click play and it will just play it live for you just as if it was moving in front of you. And that's the replay tool. And this one in here is the menu you use to um, draw on the chart and add and measure things. Okay, so this is the left menu uh, on the chart. Now, before I continue, let me have a quick look at the chat if anyone has any questions. Okay, we're good. I'll pause for a few seconds. If anyone has any questions, please let me know. Okay, let's get, okay, let's continue. Okay, so uh, one thing to mention, any of the terms that I'm mentioning uh, here, you can Google it or check YouTube for some tutorials. A lot of people have done a good job in doing tutorials on TPOs, for example, um, uh, different, the different aspects of trading view. Uh, so always make sure you read more or check more videos on YouTube on these topics. Now. What I focus on in terms of the tools is uh, the ones that we need for this stream. Obviously, there's a lot of tools in TradingView. We're not going to use them all in this stream. Um, what we will use is a simple drawing tools in here, like you know trend line or some horizontal array, etc. Um, and we'll use what we call Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci extension. That's another thing we'll use now. You can favorite the tools that you want so that it's easier to access them from this menu in here. You see this floating menu. So if you favorite any of the tools, it will appear on your uh, on this floating menu, which you can activate or deactivate from this button on the left side, bottom left. Okay, your favorite uh, tools. And uh, so yeah, pretty much this is what I'll use in terms of tra um, the drawing. So these things in here. I mean. I just favorite some of them. This one, for example, and this one. Yeah, I think we'll use these ones. And that's it. One more thing in trading view before we jump into actual trading knowledge. I know everyone is is uh, maybe more interested in, in the advanced knowledge stuff, but one thing to keep in mind about trading view is that it has a very powerful layout feature. Layout means you can have one chart on your layout. This is called a layout one chart, 
or you can have multi chart in your layout. So you can have up to 16 charts if you have premium or like some of the upper plans. You can literally have 16 different boxes and charts and different assets and different time frames, uh, like Bitcoin one hour, Bitcoin uh, four hour, gold uh, 15 minute, different time frames, different assets, etc. And you can see them as well. I'll show you quickly what that means. This is very powerful if you're using the indicator or if you want to look uh, at one screen and make a decision quickly without switching between time frames and assets. But um, this is only for TradingView Premium accounts, unfortunately, not the free one. Uh, you can sync the symbol, which means you can make it in a way where you, if you make it Bitcoin, all the charts will be Bitcoin on this layout. You can sync the interval, which means if you change it from one hour to two hour time frame, all of them will be two hours. So let me. Let me zoom out. I have an example in here. So this is the layout that I have, for example. Okay. It has five charts. One, two, three, four, five. So this is a five chart layout. And I have the interval uh, sync, synced, and the crosshair, which is the cursor, the mouse cursor synced, but not the symbol. Symbol is deactivated. This means if and any of them I click and I change the time frame from like one hour to four hour, all of them refresh into the four hour of their respective assets that I have. And like I have Solana for this one, I have gold for this one, et cetera, et cetera. So it just syncs the time frame. So it's an easy way for you to quickly switch time frame on all different charts or uh, or, or assets depending, depending on what you have enabled for the syncing. Um, for this stream, I'll just focus on one chart. Wait for that one. I'll just go for the one hour Solana. I'll use this one, for example. Now this marks kind of the end of the um, the first section of, of what I wanted to explain about trading view. Um, now we'll switch into trading basics and trading principles and dive deeper into how to actually trade uh, using uh, trading view and how to read charts. Okay, so let me zoom out a bit. And let me cancel the replay mode, and we're now in the live mode. Okay, so um, now keep in mind we will focus on what we call price action or market structure. There's many schools of, of, of trading. Uh, some people use volume analysis. Some people use what we call order flow or reading the tape actually opening how uh, people are buying and selling on the volume, um, the different aspects of volume candles, which is buy and sell. So how many people are buying? What's the volume for buying? What's the volume for selling, et cetera, et cetera. So you can dive deeper and zoom in into all of these details. Um, you can find, again, a lot of videos on YouTube about order flow, how to read the tape, how to read order flow. There are special tools for that. Although the trading view tool that I showed you for TPO is very powerful, the, 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 the candle type TPO uh, is very powerful for that as well. But there are many tools out there uh, that you could use just for that. In this stream, we're not going to go over all these details. I've used them personally. Um, it's a very advanced topic to go over, but obviously worth exploring. But you can decide to trade whether using just price action, market structure, or only TPOs and volume analysis and order flow or you can mix both of them. So it's really a decision that you need to make and depends on your thinking style, your um, attention span. Some people can't focus on too many moving variables in front of them. They want a simpler way. Um, always remember, no matter what you do in trading, it's all a probabilities game. No matter how accurate you think your prediction is or your analysis is, and no matter how professional that trader is, sometimes you'll find people who are professional uh, at trading lose and others who are totally new to the game win. The main difference between them would be who is sticking more to their plan, who is sticking more to their risk management plan, and money management. So there's different aspects when it comes to trading. Uh, in simple terms, given we have the chart open and we're speaking about risk management and uh, money management, money management is pretty much deciding how much money you want to use in this market and how you want to use it and how you want to take it out and when are you going to take out profits from your account when are you going to add more how to manage your positions in terms of money management okay that's money when it comes to money management risk management on the other side 
basically, and I'm trying to really simplify the terms in here, is looking at the chart, deciding where you want to buy, but deciding more importantly, how much you are ready to lose if this trading idea or position goes against you. So for example, looking at history is easy to say, well, price went from here to here because this is history. You already, you already know it. So you could say if I bought in here and I, let's say I bought what is equivalent to $100, for example, let's say I have, I have $1,000 in my account and I decided to buy with 10% of my account, $100 of my $1,000 here. And my goal is if I lose, I'll lose $100. Now, the question is, where will you lose it? Will you lose it here or you lose it here? If price went down here, if price went down here, if price went down here, because you're betting on longing or buying the market. So you're betting that the market is going to go up. It's a, a buy or a long. So your stop loss or where you will lose your money, that $100, should be below you. Okay, so if you're entering here, the stop loss will be below us and the take profit will be above us. That's our target. Okay, so... Uh, that's how risk management works. You got to decide where you will lose that $100 and you should be comfortable with that. You should be comfortable with the $100 being lost. You're not going to panic if you lose it. And where you will lose it. So if you think this is a big move happening and price might play a bit in this region, like, you know, price of the asset might go down and go down here in this region before it goes up because everyone is bullish, you know, about Solana, for example, this asset, then you don't want to squeeze in yourself too much. You don't want to put your stop loss too close because what if price spent a few days in this region and then went up? You don't want your stop loss to be hit. So you bring it down and down. You make it go lower and lower and lower. Let's say you want your stop loss in here. So if price went here, that's it. You lose your money. Why? Because it invalidates your theory. Your theory was that price will play in this region and then go up. So if it didn't play it, if it broke the region and went here, you want to be out of the market and you, you're fine losing your hundred dollars. And then there's another opportunity or trade idea that you'll come up with and to trade this asset or any different asset. Okay. So that's what risk management is. How much to lose in terms of money management, how, how much to lose, where you will lose it and your reward. So when I say re risk reward, RR, where's your take profit or TP, it means I lose $100, let's say in here, but I wanna win something out of this trade. How much am I gonna target winning? Let's say I wanna win $100. So if I either lose 100 or win 100, so the distance is kind of the same. So if I open my position in here, my stop loss in here, I can easily measure it with my eye like this. This will be like a one to one. So this is one and this is one. Or you could use some of the tools that TradingView has like the long position tool or the short position tool, you can easily uh, click on it, put the entry. This is where I want to buy, for example, for long. And the green is your profit. So you can just increase it as you wish. And the stop loss is this one. Let's say here, for example, I want my stop loss to be in here. And then it gives you the details. It will tell you, okay, this is a risk reward of five, 5.7, almost six. Okay. What this means is you lose $100 because you're putting $100 in this position. That's one. But you will win six times that. So like almost, so it's $600. So if price comes here, you will win $600 from this position, okay? Because you put $100, you put your stop loss here, you put your take profit here, as simple as that, okay? Let's say you wanna, you might not be able to wait all this time, you wanna enter and exit quickly, maybe you'll put your take profit in here. So it's like one, almost 1 1.2 risk reward. So you lose 100, you win $120, for example, something like this. So this is this is how you define your risk management. In general, you should not enter a trade without these details. Okay, there's different, again, different ways of trading, different schools of trading. People sometimes enter without stop losses. Uh, they use a different way of doing stop losses. They add to their positions. There's different strategies. But in a nutshell, you need to have a clear trade setup or trading trade idea, which is where am I entering? Where am I exiting in loss? And where am I exiting in profit? Where am I going to be greedy? Where am I going to be fearful? Like all of these details, you should lay it out to yourself before you even touch the buy or sell button. Okay. 
because then psychology kicks in if you're manual trading psychology kicks in and literally you change your decisions last minute and this is how you end up losing or even sometimes wiping out your account and this is why i think 97 percent of traders lose their accounts and lose in trading or even wipe out their accounts because they're not sticking to their risk management um, uh, principles for positions and for the trading that, uh, plans that they do. Okay, so that's that's in general, risk management, money management. Again, you can go on YouTube and Google and search for these terms and dive deeper into them. Let me take a quick look at the chat if anyone has asked any questions. Okay, so uh, while it's uh, asking about TPO, um, TPO is just a way for you to look at a price, uh, a time opportunity and volume, meaning um, by looking at, like if you look at the candle, let me switch back to uh, that more just very quickly. By looking at TPO and you zoom in, it's like you're asking TradingView to give you the details of each candle. Like if I don't have this on, if I have just candles, um, you lose the, the, the details of how much volume went into each section of the candle, okay? While if you switch into, this is in principle, again, this is just very, very basic explanation of TPO. While if you switch to this, it's really aggregating that for you and showing you in detail, okay? So it's, it's showing you more details of how much uh, uh, transactions happened uh, inside that candle. Okay, and where's the concentration of the volume, uh, point of control, volume high and low. So again, I, don't, I didn't want to dive deep into TPO in this uh, stream, but feel free to go on, on YouTube and check Trading Views tutorial on TPO. You don't need it uh, um, for using Trades AI, but it's definitely a very powerful tool to have in your arsenal. And as I said, some professional traders just rely on TPO and just rely on volume analysis for trading. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's what TPO is. One more question very, very quickly. What exchange is used for perpetual contra contracts? It depends. I mean, what this is, uh, if you're asking about cryptocurrencies, you could use Bybit, Binance, Bingx. There's a lot of, uh, of exchanges. Or you could use some of the uh, brokers that offer you CFD, uh, such as the ones that work with TradeLocker, for example. If you go to tradelocker.com and you check the um, brokers that use trade lockers, some of them have cryptocurrencies uh, like Osprey FX, for example, and Next Trade. So there's a bunch of of, of um, brokers that provide um, cryptocurrencies in their in their CFD uh, offerings as well. Okay, so no more questions. Let's keep going. Okay, so uh, now one thing to keep in mind when you look at price charts in general is that price likes to move in a laddering aspect okay so when i say a ladder it literally means a step-by-step -step ladder so if you look at this section of the chart in here you could see price jumping as steps it's like a ladder up a ladder up a ladder up a ladder up okay and then it goes down in a ladder up in a ladder down in a ladder sometimes the ladders are aggressive so like you know big quick moves for the step some of them are, you know, tiny or like, you know, crunched together. This is what we call the imbalance in the market. Okay? It's very important to understand these, these principles because you'll use them once we go over the signals and the indicator very shortly in the other section of the, um, of the, of the stream. So an imbalance is literally when the ladder is happening and suddenly a big move happens, like this one in here, a big move happens that is different than the rest of the ladder. Like the ladder here was a bit crunched and then boom, a big move happened. So this is an imbalance. Why it's important? Because markets tend to rebalance at one point in the future. Doesn't mean right away, could be in a few hours, could be in a day, could be in a month, it doesn't matter. Markets like to rebalance itself. So if there is an imbalance, this one in here, big move is an imbalance. Usually markets act one point they'll revisit that imbalance okay and the midpoint of that so if you say from here to here that's like a then whole move quick move from here to here the midpoint you can use your eye for that or you could use what we call the fibonacci 
uh, retracement tool. I'll show you how to do it. But the midpoint or the 50% of that is called the equilibrium point of the imbalance. Okay, that's called an equilibrium. Price likes to go back to the equilibrium of an imbalance. So this is an imbalance in here. Let me use the drawing tool very quickly. Uh, I think this one here, yeah. Uh, this is the magnet. You can enable it or disable it. If you can enable it, if you want trading view to easily snap your mouse, your cursor into the end of the candle, or you can disable it to draw freely. So this is the move I'm talking about. Okay, this one in here. The midpoint of it, the 50% or half of it, is the imbalance. And what I'm saying is, and this is what you know, general market principles that you might hear in other. And, and, and many other curriculums like in you know, ICT, SMC, um, any mar auction market theory, all these rely mainly on how market moves and how it balances and rebalances itself. Okay, so the buyers and the sellers move the market this way. There is more buyers than sellers, so price went up. Okay, there's more demand to buy, so price went up. So it's kind of looking at the chart and knowing that when price does a move like this, there's what we call unfinished business in here. People need to still negotiate price in this region. And this is why Ives comes back and balances um, a, a fair value a price is what we call. This is a fair value. The mid kind of like this is where we, we think the market thinks the price is fair, for example. So whatever it, it stays, it's kind of the fair value at that specific time. Okay. So that's how, that's in general how, how these work. And the purpose of why I'm mentioning this is eventually price returns to that point of 50%. Okay, as you can see in here, price, although it did this move and then spent some time in here and then went up, eventually it went down to the 50% of the section here, as you can see. Okay, so that's how rebalancing the market works. Now, one might say, does it always work? Absolutely not. These are general principles, general market theory, market auction theory, supply demand, you know, all these, they're just general principles of how people negotiate price. And charts are basically people negotiating or bots and algorithms negotiating price. It goes up if there is demand, it goes down. If there's not high demand or supply, that's definitely what we're looking at when, when we look at charts. So we're trying to find reasons to buy or sell an asset based on these principles as our arsenal, okay? This is what you do when it comes to trading. You're trying to use these principles and reflect them on the chart, okay? Now, I could use what we call a Fibonacci tool to find that 50% line. If I, it's harder for me, hard for, to find it with my eye, I could just use the Fibonacci retracement, which is from here, Fibonacci retracement, and then put it at the beginning of the move. And then I put it at the end of the move here. And that's it. Now I have custom settings. If I double click on it, there's the custom settings that I have for the Fibonacci. Uh, you could do it for the same for you. You could put 236, 0 0.236, 0 0.382, and 0 0.5. This is the equilibrium, 0 0.5, as I said. These, or the region here, is what we call the golden pocket. It's, and I'll explain very quickly, very briefly, briefly what this means. But these are my settings for the to here. The 50% line is the golden pocket is this one here. Okay. Pocket is under the 50%. Okay. Anything under the 50% means it's a discount. So if you want to buy something, you want to buy it at a discount. You don't want to buy expensive. Like if price is here and you draw this tool in here from here to here and price is here it's above the 50%. So this is called the premium zone from here to here. This is from here to here, it's called a discount zone. From zero to 50 is a discount, from 50 to 100 is a premium, okay? You wanna buy at the discount. So from here to here, this is the discount area, anything below this line, okay? So you can see any buy in here, jumped price, you know, bounced from it. Buy in here, price, bounced from it okay so this is where you want to buy not here this is why when we look at let's say bitcoin's price for example and it's like at all-time high some people might say well it's overpriced it's overbought 
So it's like a lot of people bought. So now is not the time to buy. It's the time to sell or the time to wait for the price to come back. And then this is where you buy. Again, doesn't mean that when you buy will go up. It might bounce a bit or not even bounce at all and just you know drop from there. Again, it's all probabilities. But we're going over the principles that a lot of the market traders, a lot of the bots and the algorithms rely on or use to execute these trades. So if you go with the trend and trade with the big guys, trade with the professional traders, you're most probably going to end up on the winning side. Okay, so this is what we call a pre the, the discount and the premium. PD in some um, and, um, and some other curriculums call it you know an ICT or uh, SMC. You know, some of them call it PD, uh, a, a premium discount. But in a in a nutshell, this is what it is. You have two points. The midpoint is the equilibrium, fifty percent. This zone is the discount, and this one is the premium. The same works for the drop. So this is like for a price move from here to here. If the price moved from here. Let me delete this one. Price moved from here to here, and you want to short or sell. The same thing. You put the point from the top to the bottom. Same story. 50% equilibrium. So price went here, and then from this point onwards, price went to the 50%, went down, went to the 50, and it was golden pocket, and went down. So this is why a lot of people use the Fibonacci retracement tool to trade the markets, as long as you're pulling the right move. Uh, and this comes from experience and looking at the market. You don't want to put a very tiny move and try to, you know, find the 50% off it, et cetera. Although it works on a lower time frame, maybe you do it on, like you do this one in here on the one hour chart and then you drop into the one minute chart and you can trade it. But in general, you want to look for big moves and then use this tool to see where the majority of the markets will try to sell or buy based on the premium discount. Okay, uh, before I uh, continue, any questions? Let me open the chat. Uh, for the signals for the for the exchange, we use for now uh, for the crypto ones Bybit. I think we use Bybit Perpetual. So BTC USDT dot P, for example, uh, S O L USDT dot P on Bybit. So I think this is what yeah this is what we're using for the, the signals. But mm, generally speaking, they're all very similar. Uh, Yeah, I mean the 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 pace of move while of of uh, of move for price movement doesn't matter if it's going up or down. It could go up very quickly or down very quickly. It all depends on the auction happening. So how people are negotiating price and how overbought, oversold, how interesting the 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 asset is at that specific time. So you can't say you know buying is like you know moving up is quick and going down is slow or the opposite. It really depends on the on on that specific time and what's happening in that uh, at the market. At that specific time. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's keep going. I'll try to make it uh, quicker so that we have enough time to go over trades AI <laughs> principles. Okay, so that's that's premium discount. That's laddering. We get, we went over laddering. So again, you what you want to do when you look at any chart is you want to identify those ladders. You want to identify the ladders because you assume that. A ladder is the trend. So if this is a ladder in here, let's say this is the ladder, you want to buy because it's going up. You want to long. You don't want to go against the trend. So as long as you see it clearly and you make that decision, you make that idea that price is going up from here, which means you want to try to buy. Even if it's at the top, even if it's at all time high, that's not the indicator. What's what you want to do is you want to you can be cautious if it's like at all time high, but doesn't mean that it's not going to keep going up. Okay. So Try to go with the trend always. Now, one might say, well, the one hour trend is going up, but if you show me the, uh, I don't know, for maybe the weekly trend, it's not going up. Well, it, it is for, for Solana, it's going up. But you know what I mean? Like in, in one time frame, it might be going up, but if you dive into the five minute time frame, it's going down. Like this one in here, for example. This one in here on the weekly, it was going down. But on the one hour, Solana on the one hour, well, you could say it went up from here. Okay. So how do you mix and match between these different time frames? You need to make a theory. You need to pick a time frame. Say, okay, I'm gonna trade this asset on the one hour. My guide, my direction, my bias, this is what we call this trend direction, is the one hour. 
And I'll try to look for the past one day, for example, and identify the ladder, identify the trend. Well, this is a downtrend, it's going down. So I'm not gonna try to be a hero and try to buy against the trend, although you can, and this is what we call a contrarian trader or contrarian, contrary to the trade, to the direction of the market. You can be buying even as the trend is going down, but it's the riskier play. Sometimes it's more profitable because it might work uh, 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 if you quickly enter an exit and the market is still going down, you buy an exit, buy an exit, buy an exit. But if market keeps going down and you're in a position and holding that position, you bought in here, for example, against the market trend, which is going down, you bought in here and then it went up, but it, you didn't take your profit and then it went down and now you're, you're, you're still in your buy or long position in big loss. That's the problem of trading against the trend. While if you're trading with a trend, you short or you sell here, even if it went up back to your entry, or even slightly above it, eventually it goes down, it goes down. Because even if you short and exit, short and exit, short and price went above you, eventually, if the trend is still persistent, it will keep going down. So the first step is to identify the trend on one time frame. This is what I want to, what I like to do. I just pick one time frame. Um, if I'm investing long term, months and years, I definitely use the daily and the weekly and the monthly. If I'm day trading and I want to have, you know, profits during the day and the month, like for income, etc. This is what I want to do with trading. I rely on four hour, two hour, uh, one hour, 30 minutes, and 15 minutes. I might drop to the five minute and one minute for execution. But if you're not a professional trader, it might be noise for you, it might be dangerous to trade these low time frames. Stick to the higher time frames, one hour and above, for example. Okay, so I define the trend and then just go with the trend. So this is a trend you wanna sell, 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 okay? You can hold, you can sell short and then hold it, or you can just sell an exit and then sell again an exit and sell again an exit. So, or if it's an uptrend, you wanna buy an exit, buy an exit, buy an exit. So it really depends on your risk management and how you wanna uh, risk this uh, trading game, okay? So that's how you identify a trend and Given we're still at the principle of trends and ladders and uptrends and all that, let me remove this one. We explained how when price did a big move, it's called, you know, it caused an imbalance in the market. One thing to keep in mind is that these candles, and this is where the color of the candle plays a role, white again is bullish, green maybe on your chart, blue for my chart is your. Uh, red or bearish candles. So when price does this move, it from here, it went up and then down and then aggressively moved up, quickly broke this point, okay? It didn't even stop, like it, it didn't even print any bearish candle, any blue candle, it just kept going up and up and up. This is what we call a an OB or an order block, okay? Later I'll explain it in the indicator. This is what we call an OB, so something like this, an OB, an order block. And, and it's kind of the basis of the step. When I say a ladder is a step, a step, a step, a step, as you can see, they are the steps, okay? We also call them valleys. When it's like, it goes down and up, it's a valley, it looks like a valley, a V, a valley. If it goes up and down, it's called a peak, okay? A peak and a valley. The order block, some people call it the whole zone, an order block. Some people call one candle, but in general, what's common is that the order block is the last candle before that big move. So back to this moving here, when price went up, went down, down, and then went up. This last red or blue candle you have before that massive move up, that's what we call the order block or OB, okay? That's what you need to know for now before you continue. So again, ladders leave order blocks behind them. In the future, they might come back and retest them to create a new step. So this is a step, go up. This is a step, step, but price sometimes might revisit this step and then go up from it or break it, okay? But these are like printed on the chart so you can see how the ladder is happening. Okay, this is the easiest way to look at any chart by looking at the ladder and the steps and the order, what we call the order blocks. Why it, it, it matters to understand order blocks? Because usually, without diving into deep details, liquidity, or there's a lot of people 
are negotiating price in here before the sudden move happened. So there's still unfin unfinished business in this region. So price, when it comes back to it, there is a lot of people that want to buy or sell here. People who, who were shorting this market, okay, are now in loss because they were betting on the market going down. They shorted in this region, they're in loss, and they're waiting for price to come back to even their break even to get rid of their losing short position at an equilibrium or break even, okay? And this is why when price revisits these order blocks or these steps or these zones, you'll find it doing an, a bounce, for example, or an, a, a, a reaction. Now, how big that reaction depends on, well, the volume trapped in that zone. If a lot of people want to sell, uh, sorry, want to want to exit their short losing position in here, how do, how do they exit their losing short positions in here? By doing the opposite, which is the buy. So actually, they execute a buy or they need to buy here. So if a lot of people were in the losing short and price came back to them, it hits the zone, a lot of buy orders, market orders will be executed in here to exit from their short losing position at the break even. And this is why a lot of buy happens and a lot of people, a lot the market bounces up from there. This is the basic principle of why you see these bounces happening and, and, and the steps and the ladders and how price moves. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to make it very short for 15 minutes, and then we'll dive into the indicator, where I think we were at one hour mark in the stream. Uh, let me have a look at the questions very quickly, if anyone has any questions. OK, we're good. Uh, perfect. OK, it's getting more interesting and more interesting as we dive deeper into the principles. Um, another important principle to keep in mind is what we call the Elliott waves. I was uh, invented or perceived by uh, one of the technicians, um, uh, a very old uh, theory, uh, market technicians, which is in principle based on ladders as well and the waves. Okay, some people call them waves. Ladders, it's all the same thing. An uptrend, it's all at the end of the day, same thing. There's an uptrend, there's a downtrend, okay? The Elliott wave theory says price usually anywhere on any time frame, on any asset, on anything, moves in three waves up. One, two, three, for example, okay? Push up, push up, push up. And then down with two, one, push, two, okay? Two or three, depends, depends on how you look at it, okay? So this is what we call an Elliott wave. And you can see it across the chart. Now, sometimes you see it with big moves, sometimes you see it with tiny moves, but this is what we call the Elliott wave or Elliott waves theory, okay? Three moves up, and then two moves down. One, two, three, and then A, B, C. Okay, so keeping this in mind, whenever you look at any chart, if you, and again, and this is relative, some people might see this as three waves, some people might see it as more than that, like my mom might say, okay, well, this is not three waves, this is one, two, three, four, five, again, it depends, it's all relative to how you're looking at the chart and your time frame. Okay, but the general principle is, if you can catch a move that is clear uh in your site that is matches this then probably you can expect the next move to be down so if price was going up three waves now you can expect price to do it two waves down now down where usually to the equilibrium point or the golden pocket so let's take this move in here let's take this one in here okay let's maybe switch it to the to the four hour it might be easier to see i don't know yeah it might be easier to see in here Let's take, let's take this one in here, okay? You could say one, two, three, and then this is one, and this is two. Simple as this, okay? So how can you use this? Well, if I was, if I saw this here, so if, if, if we were back in time in here, and I saw this here like this, 
I can kind of predict that this is the next move that will happen. And there's like one, two, three, or one, two, three, however you wanna, wanna think of it, okay? New high, new high, new high. It needs to be making new highs, new high, new high. So this is a low, a high, a lower low, a higher high, a lower low, a higher high, and then it went down, okay? So how do you know where it will go into? Again, there's no guarantees, but you could use the Fibonacci tool. You could say from here to here. Equilibrium, 50%, golden pocket here. What happened? Let's see. There you go. That's literally how price moved. Okay. So this is how you mix different theories, different ways of looking at charts and try to come up with a theory. What I just did here is I came up with a theory. I used Elliott Wave, I used Fibonacci, equilibrium, premium discount principles, all that to make a decision, maybe not to short the market in here because it's an uptrend and I told you we're not gonna go against the trend, but maybe long here in this region because it's a discount for this Elliott Wave move up. So I expect price to go there. Okay, so this is how you use the different theories. Once you understand the different theories, which are used by many traders, used by a lot of algorithms and, and bots, you'll start to understand how others are trading, and this is how you can beat the market. You need to know how others are beating the market and moving the big money, how the banks are moving, how the big algorithms are moving. So this way you don't go against them and be the money that you give to them. You want to be with them, you want to go with their direction, with their strategies. Okay, most of the time, not always, obviously. So that's what Elliott wave is, the three waves up and two waves down, equilibrium or, or discount. Uh, now, it might sometimes not even go to discount. Like, again, it's all probabilities. Don't take any trading principle and just stick to it as it will work or not. It's all the probabilities. And this is where risk management comes into play. You should not risk something in a trade idea that you can't afford to lose. Let's say you have a thousand dollar account. Don't just put five hundred dollars in one trade and assume that price will jump from here to here. What if it doesn't? What if it just breaks and just goes down there? You lost half of your account. This is where you you try to risk one percent of your account, even zero point five percent. Like you have a if you have a thousand dollar account, you can risk fifty dollars, for example. You could risk less than that. So. Calculate that ratio and accordingly put uh, uh, the risk in the trade so that when you hit your stop loss, you're not going to lose more than that. You don't want to lose more than that $50 if you have a $1,000 account, for example. Because think of them as bullets for your next trade. You have like, a, 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 let's say you have a, a, a hundred opportunities. You have a, a, an account with like a $1,000 and you have a hundred opportunities to play. So instead of going with 50% of your account, that's like one opportunity, you lost your, your half of your account, go with $10, go with $20, go with $50. So you have a lot more opportunities. If one of them loses, you have too many other opportunities. I'll maybe short the market here, I'll long the market here. Like the more and more opportunities you give yourself in the market, the longer you stay in the market, the more chances you have to be um, a break-even trader or even a profitable trader. So if you're a break-even trader, by the way, you're better than almost the whole market, majority of market are losing traders. So keep that in mind. So start by being a uh, break even, like win, lose, win, lose, but like maintain your capital at the end of the day uh, or week or month better than, you know, going aggressive and trying to win fast and then you end up losing and wiping out your account. Okay, so I think we kind of covered pretty much uh, most of what I want to the cover in trading uh, principles, general trading principles. Um, yeah, one more thing is the, I'll go over the Fibonacci uh, projection and also a bit about moving averages and VWAP just so, because some, some people like to trade those. So it's important to just have an idea. I personally don't trade moving averages and I do trade use VWAPs and ABWAPs, but I'll, I'll go into, into what those mean. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll go over first the Fibonacci uh, extension tool and then the moving averages and then have uh, a pause for any quick questions before I jump into Trades AI and then how, why Trades AI is so powerful as a, as a tool and algorithm and uh, signals. Okay, so Fibonacci extension. Just like I did the Fibonacci retracement by saying, okay, this is a move 
quick trace. I want to shorten here, for example. So I want to say this, do this. This is the, re the, 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 the zone I want to short at. As you can see, you could sell here and price went down. So this is what we call a, retra a retracement. You have two points down from here to here or up from here to here. You use it to draw all these ratios. While for the Fibonacci extension, you need three points. It projects, it ex extends the move for you. What does that mean? It means if I go with this, let's say, let's take, uh, let's take this move from here to here to here. Okay, it's an uptrend. So I'm projecting the move to be an uptrend. I want to see the ratios for the future from here. Okay, where can price go and interact? So what I'll do, I'll use a magnet for this just to snap quickly to the, to the wick from here to the highest point in this region, which is this one, and then to the lowest point for this ladder step, this one. So this, I like, I, I use a step of the ladder because we said this is a ladder step. I use this step, this big step in here. Okay, this one here. And what you have is a projection of the future where the algorithms and where traders might be looking to short or sell the market. So if price keeps going up to these areas, the default, by the way, the default uh, values you have uh, in trading view are good, but you can disable them and just use these ones if you want. Uh, 1.618, 618, 4.618, etc., etc., and 1. But you can uh, enable as well the other ones up to you. These are just ratios where a lot of the algorithms, a lot of the traders use uh, this tool to to execute trades at. This is why you see a reaction at this point, for example. Market went down from it, for example. Now, if price went here, we expect it to also go down. Usually, price like to move with these things, likes to move between the zones. Okay, so like something like this, and then maybe like this, and then like this. Okay, and that might go down, might go up. So there is no guarantees. It's all lines, numbers. This is what you want to find out. This is what you want to decide which price level I want to buy or sell. And then where do I put my stop loss? So a basic way of using this is you can short the market here, maybe like sell, maybe put your stop loss here. Maybe put it like, like you need to come up with an idea and decide based on all these things that we explained, if there is a reason for you to put your stop loss somewhere, you should put it. Don't enter a trade without a stop loss. Um, usually, especially if, if not a you're not a professional, and then wait for the move to happen, and it either hits your stop loss or it goes to your take profit. Okay. But what I'm giving you is just the tools that all other traders and algorithms and uh, uh, professional traders use to execute their trades. So you can expect a lot of other people to try to do the same as you do. So if you move with the market, you move with these guys. The majority or the professional traders or the big guys probabilities of winning becomes higher for you so that's what a fibonacci retracement and a fibonacci extension is hopefully it was helpful to understand and i'll go over now quickly moving averages and then we pause for a few quick questions if anyone has and then we'll switch to trade ai okay so you click on indicators okay and you search for indicators like TradingView has a lot of different free and premium indicators that you can install. Uh, Trades AI is one of them. Trades AI Elite is one of the indicators, but there's a lot of indicators in here. So let's say we want the moving average one, just like moving average. You have a bunch. The majority of people use what we call the SMA or the simple moving average, this one in here. Some people use the EMA or the exponential moving average. I'm not going to dive deep into the difference between them. One of them is a faster way of, of averaging the market, like the exponential way. And one of them is the simple kind of math average uh, formula. I'll just I'll just use a simple one just so you can get an idea of what a moving average or an SMA looks like. I just clicked on it, added it. There you go, the blue line. You can double click it, change its color. Let's put it red just so we can see it clearly in here. And then you go to inputs and change the length. The length is the number of candles being averaged at any point. So you hear people saying 50 moving average, 100 moving average, 150 moving average. 
it's just a way of saying these are standard numbers. The, the reason why they work is because a lot of people use them. A lot of algorithms use them. This is why they work. So what people try to tell you, we trade on the moving averages because a lot of bots and algos and people use the same. So they want to buy at that place until big liquidity comes in and try to go against that. And then people who bought at that, the moving average will end up losing because they think that if they buy, they should win. And they don't put a stop loss and they end up losing. So again, it's another tool. Use it in a smart way. Always use risk management whenever you trade any of these theories. There's a moving average. So an easy way of, of saying uh, what a moving average is, is if I use the drawing tool, okay. Uh, which one was the drawing tool? This one, sorry. Okay, so if I use the drawing tool and I tell you to, let's disable the moving average, and I tell you to uh, draw simply the average of this trend, like how is it going? You could draw it like this. You could say, well, it's like this, almost like a trend line, solid, straight. Or you could say like this, valid. Or you could say like this, valid. It's all moving averages. It's all moving averages. So what, what I just did is I was trying to change the way I'm averaging the candles. Okay. So when I go higher with the number of candles, it's a smoother average. Like let's say I go, I go, I go with 200 candles. See how the moving average is now smooth, okay? It's not sensitive, so it's like a general moving average. It's not like well, this move happened in here, but it didn't affect much the line. It didn't move quickly with it. It took its time because it's a, 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 a 200 candle moving average. What does that mean? Well, simply, at any point of the chart, wherever I put my mouse, let's say here, okay? 200 moving average means calculate 200 candles before me. Give me the data for 200 of these boxes, candles, average them, okay, and divide by 200. Now, when I say average them, that means I need to pick a point because the candle is a high, a low, an open, and a close. And this is where you can change the source. Say close, you're telling the algorithm, go take the last 200 candles, take the values of the close of the candle, so the close of the candle, the close of the candle, the box, the close of the candle, take these because they are prices where it closed, it's a price in dollar, for example. Take these values, add them up, add the last 200, at this point, let's say, for example, from here, 200 before me, divide by 200, just find the average of the close. You could say average of the low, it changes, see? You're taking the lows, the lows, the lows, the lows. Uh, open, close, low. There is a bunch of, of algorithms that we have in here. I'm not going to go over them, but this is what a moving average is. Okay. So next time someone tells you 100 moving average, 200 moving average, 913 moving average, 13 EMA exponential moving average, they're just referring to what I just explained. So TradingView has this tool. You can easily add the indicator and it will do the, the averaging for you. So you don't need to, to do it yourself. And then Basically, let's say the 100 moving average. And then you can say, if price is above the moving average, I'll wait for it to come back to it and buy at it. This is what a lot of people say. If price is here, it's away from the moving average, I'll wait for it to come back and buy at it. And then if it's below it, I'm gonna sell it short, we're bearish, we're bearish. If we're above it, we're bullish, we're bullish, etc. Again, where do you put your stop loss? It's not very accurate sometimes. You can't easily put your stop. You can put it in here. You can put it in here. You can put it up. See, like it's not, it's a fluid way of trading. And there's many of them. Like literally, I can type any number in here and I'll have a different moving average. So why this one more works? Why not the 50 MA works? Why the four hour 50 MA works? Why the one hour 50? Like they're all different ones. This is why personally I don't rely on moving averages. But this is what a moving average is. If you want to also include it in your trading arsenal or, or theory, sometimes it's helpful as well, especially for high time frames like one hour and above. Uh, if you put like 100 EMA, 50 EMA, or SMA, these are usually where people end up trying to buy uh, and sell. Okay. Uh, finally, we have the VWAP. And this will end the section of the stream about trading knowledge and trading principles. Uh, a VWAP is a moving average that is volume weighted. 
So I'd say volume weighted average price. What does that mean? Well, let's add it. You can easily add it by clicking on it. And let's disable the moving average. And this is the VWAP. Let's zoom in. The green one is the, the VWAP. The VWAP, again, you can change the settings. And you can change uh, details from here. You can change the source. You can change a bunch of things as well. But basically, it's including volume in the calculation. Okay, meaning when price moves from here to here, let's disable view up. When price moves from here to here, we see the price candles, okay? But we don't know the volume, like how much money went into this candle versus this candle versus this candle, et cetera. Et cetera. And this is why I said there's TPOs and volume profiles and different tools and, and volume candles, which you can enable or disable that can tell you these details, uh, aggregate volume, or you can go with uh, detailed volume, um, um, uh, different tools that you could use for that. But in a nutshell, the candles on their own don't have that information. Okay. VWAP, uh, our moving average, doesn't have that information. It's just uh, averaging the price. Doesn't is not aware of the volume in these candles. But if you have the VWAP, it is aware of the volume. It adds volume into its calculation. So a big move with not a lot of volume, some people call it a fake move, okay? And I, I, I hate to give labels for anything, but this is the term used for a move with no, not enough volume. Let's enable volume just to give you an idea. So some of these candles are big and their volume candles, respective volume candles are big. Some of them might be big, but their volume candle is not big, okay? These are the things that you're looking for with VWAP. You're trying, the algorithm is averaging both, is taking a look at the volume and the moving average price, and then combines both of them, and then draws the average for you accordingly. Let me disable the band. Just keep the VWAP itself, okay? You're free to play around with all of these and check YouTube for detailed tutorials, but I want to go over everything in this stream just to make sure everyone is aware of these terms. This is the VWAP. Now, if you compare it to a normal moving average, now, I mean, this is depends on the, on the length as well. So a hundred moving average, this one, I'm not quite sure how much, uh, I forgot how to change the length, but anyway, it's the moving average, including the volume. So if the volume is high, it will affect it will bring the, vo the, 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 v the, the VWAP higher, quicker. If the volume is low and the price made a big move, it's not gonna affect it too much. So that's the difference between a moving average and a, a VWAP. VWAP is sensitive to uh, volume as well, while moving average, just pure moving average without the volume effect. That's it. Uh, let me take a very, quick look at the chat if anyone has any questions. Okay, perfect. So I have questions about the signals and the TPs and the SLs for the signals and the best way to use the indicator. This is what we will do now and the other 50 minutes, uh, sorry, 30 minutes hopefully uh, of this session. Um, I'll go over trades AI, the indicator, the signals, um, and then how you can use everything we went over to execute trades and hopefully be a profitable trader. Okay, so let's switch back to the charts. Give me a few seconds, please. Okay, so Trades AI. Um, Trades AI has two different offerings. We have the, let me disable everything here so it's not confusing. We have the signals, 
which you can think of them as alerts, tell you when to buy and sell. And then we have the indicator, which is the tool you use on TradingView to draw all these lines and boxes automatically so that you don't need to manually think too much and look for a lot of the things that went over in this stream. So it makes your life easier. The indicator makes your life easier to uh, trade. So what I'll do is I'll start with the signal and then we'll jump into the, uh, the indicator and how to install it and how to use it and all that. Okay. So this is, this is a signal that comes from Telegram. We have a free Telegram group uh, or channel, sorry, that we send some signals uh, at. Uh, they're very high win rate, very profitable. Um, obviously, it changes based on market situations, but in general, our algorithms provide super high, sometimes 70 to 90% win rate for some of the assets and the signals that we send. So this is how a signal looks like, whether it's from the free Telegram or the VIP. The VIP obviously has much way more signals and assets and asset classes and time frames and uh, scalping or like you know low time frame, high time frame. If you want to invest for high time for like a bigger move, uh, kind of on any asset, you go for the high time frame, for example, uh, or some people use low time frame for scalping. So VIP has a lot more signals and trading setups and ideas than the the free uh channel which i think just five signals a day for now but bring it higher or lower lower depending on uh what we see is best but the vip one sometimes you get tens and sometimes over 100 signal uh per day so a lot of opportunities and as i explained in the video it's all about opportunities when you trade you want to trade with minimal risk that you have a lot of opportunities that you can take in the market. The more opportunities we send your way through signals and indicator, the, as long as you have the capital to execute them and you're not like risking half your account or like or 10% of your account in one trade and you end up losing it and then you're gonna complain like, why, why did I lose? Well, there's nothing guaranteed in this market. Nothing guaranteed, not even banks can guarantee anything in this market. Big guys can't guarantee anything. It's all about managing your risk and making sure that you, you, uh, you enter what you doesn't hurt your, your total capital or balance. Um, okay, so this is the signal. Uh, the signal is pretty much, it has an ID on the top, which we use to identify. If you wanna chat with us or have any questions, that's the ID. If we're gonna come back to the signal, you have the ID in here. And then we say the assets. So this one is a Solana signal. I got it from Telegram. I screenshot this from Telegram. So it's a Solana. S O L S D T. As I said, one of the guys mentioned asked about the uh, what uh, the what asset uh, ticker does the signal use from TradingView? For cryptocurrencies, we use Bybit for now. Um, but you could use any. You could execute on any exchange. But make make sure that the numbers sometimes might be a bit different on your exchange. But you will see why having the indicator now with the signals solves a lot of your problems versus just blindly using the signals if you're not knowledgeable in training. Okay, so the signal has the, the name of the asset in here. So it's a Solana perpetual contract, SOLUSDT. This is the ticker, SOLUSDT.P. So you go to here and you search for that and you find it. As I said, we use Bybit, so you go for Bybit uh, for the crypto. And then you have entry zone. Entry zone is where you wanna execute the trade. If it's a short sell, it means you wanna short the market at this entry zone. It's a buy long, uh, long buy, then you wanna buy or long at this zone, okay? In this case, it's a short signal. One thing to mention, um, as I said before, it's not financial advice, nothing um, I'm, I'm giving here on this stream is to be taken as financial advice, always it's educational content, make sure you use your own judgment and research before executing any uh, trading um, activities. Um, some people might not want to short the market. Some people just buy and long the market for many reasons. Uh, the signals that come on our uh, Telegram give you both opportunities, but keep in mind when we say short sell, it also means it's a place where price will drop. So what we're trying to tell you in, in these signals is these are regions on the chart where expect price to go down or go up. So this is the easiest way to think of it. So this is... And, and that's how you can use these signals to actually 
execute your own trades, whether you just want to buy and then exit at the TP or want to exit at the next short opportunity, sell upward. Like it's really up to you to use the toolkit that we offer. But the signals, make sure you identify if it's a short sell or a, a long buy before you look into the details. Okay. So this one is a short sell, which means that's an opportunity to short the market at this zone. Okay. And we're giving you a stop loss recommendation at this price. And the recommended take profits. You can pick one of them. You could pick all of them. You could exit partially at all of them. Um, a lot of people go for number four, number five, number three. Some people go for number eight. It really depends on on your strategy and how much you're risking, etc. Because sometimes you might risk 0.5% or 1% of your account in all trades. Sometimes some trades, maybe on some time frames, will execute on like on the one hour, maybe risk 1%. On the four hour, you want to maybe risk 2%. Like it all depends on how you're executing. But what I want to achieve in this stream is make sure you understand the structure of the signal and the indicator and how you can use them to execute. Okay. Um, so you get the signal like this. Take a look at the timestamp. So this is on my computer. I'm in Toronto, EST time zone. So it's, it was 8 p.m. I think this was yesterday, 8 p.m. Now it's around, uh, well, around 11.30 a.m. next day. So this, was, this came 8 p.m. yesterday. What I did in here is I replayed the chart to that time. Okay, so this is where the signal came. The chart was like this, and the signal came on Telegram. So this is what you, what you have. What this is basically telling me is now, as long as we have not notified you of TP hit, TP hit, TP hit. Like if just the signal came, and you do, you don't see the same signal ID if you search in that group. The same signal ID updated TP hit, TP hit, TP hit, or it doesn't say stopped out somewhere. This means the signal is still valid. Okay. So some people might say, I opened the signal and it's already at the take profit. So it came late or it came delayed. My answer to that is no. You got to look at the signal as two opportunities. You have what we call the momentum market trade, and you have what we call the pending limit order trade. You could use both. You could use either. But it's important to understand how these signals are generated in our algorithms. Okay? So if we come in here, this is the 8 p.m. mark. This is where literally price closed, and then 8 p.m. signal came. It's saying short that price will go down from this zone. This zone is 132.66. Okay, so I'm going to use this tool to draw the line. Uh, let me hear you say all this. 132.66. I'll just draw it like this and then tweak it. Six, six, like this. Okay. Uh, you can just use the first line. You don't need the second the second entry, but some people enter here and here. Some people just enter here. Some people enter half at the first one and another half in the last or in the middle between them. So that really depends on, on your strategy. But for me, I like to enter uh, at the beginning of the entry zone. So this is the entry. This is where the algorithm is telling you to short the market. Okay. And it came literally at this candle close. So not this one. It came here. As soon as this candle closed, Okay, 19, which means the end of 19, the end of 7 p.m., which is 8 p.m. So when this closes and then this opens, it's 8 p.m. Signal came at that time. So what did happen is price, you will see price went up, hit the price, and then went down. Okay, so the same moment 8 p.m. that came, within after 8 p.m., maybe within 8 to 9 p.m., this move happened. Price went up, hit the entry, then went down. Where did it go to? Well, it went to 19, almost 129.43. What TP is that? It's almost TP6, I think, TP5, TP6. Okay. So it quickly went, took the entry, and then went to the uh, TP. Okay. So that's if you want to wait for a what we call a pending order. 
a limit order. So as soon as signal came, price was here. It was already at the TP, if you ask me. It was already here. It was already 131.8. So it was already maybe in TP2, like one of those TP, for example. Doesn't mean anything. You place your limit order at the price that the signal tells you, and you wait for it. You put the stop loss, 138.27, which is somewhere here. Yeah, 138.27, I think, somewhere here. You put your entry here. You put your stop loss here. You put your take profit, four, five, whatever you want to pick. Maybe number, go for TP4 if you want, an average, or TP5. Put it. Just wait for it. And as you can see, price went to it and then went to the, T, to the TP immediately one hour after. Now, it might do it multiple times. It might, in the future, might do it again, even go lower than that. It went even to 127. It went even to, to TP8 at the end, I think, almost TP8, TP7. So, so this is what we call a limit pending order trade for the signal. And I'll show you how to execute that on an exchange or like something like Trade Locker, for example, platform. But you open a, as soon as you see the signal, as long as there's no TPs, sent on telegram no stopped out word anywhere nothing then you literally just enter uh, a limit order stop loss tp i forget it. the other way of trading these signals are what we call the momentum trade momentum trade means if i go back in time and i get the signal literally here at this point and it's saying this is the entry and tp I don't per se need to wait for this touch to happen. 8 p.m. comes, price is almost still near it. I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna enter with a market order, for example, put my stop loss in here, put my TP somewhere, whatever it is here, or like, you know, pick one of the numbers, and that's it. As long as price is not too far away from the entry, okay? So we're still near it. So there is no big difference between here and here. Like it's not going to give me any sometimes exact touch. Sometimes price comes so close to it and then goes down. So to benefit from the signal with such opportunity, you don't need to wait for it. It's just giving you a direction. The signal telling you, hey, we're expecting short from here to here. So if price is still in the beginning of that move, you can enter it as a market. As long as you put your stop loss, you take profit. Okay. So that's what we mean when we say momentum market move trade for the signal. Don't wait for it. Don't wait for the zone. We can enter as long as we're, we're near it. But don't try to enter and the price is here. Like if the price is already here, it's signaled at 8 p.m. And then you know, 8 p.m. is the price is already here. Then this doesn't mean it's a, it's a momentum move because we're already at the, the end of the, or like it's already at the TP you wanted to target. So it doesn't, doesn't make sense. So you need to use a limit pending order and then set it and forget it at the entry. Okay. Some people might use a tolerance, which means they're not going to put it exactly at 132.66. might be a bit lower for shorts. You want to front run it. We call it front run it. So you can get, put it a bit lower than that. For longs, you can put it a bit higher. For longs, you want to long the markets. You want to enter before everyone. For short, you want to enter before everyone. So you could do, you could do that. Uh, also, keep in mind that different exchanges, different brokers have different pricing. So sometimes you might look at our signal and it says specific numbers. You look at your broker and you say, well, it never went to that price and your signal said it hit TPs. That's because our algorithm uses, let's say for cryptocurrency, it uses Bybit Perpetual. So this is what it's using to track. Um, there might be a price difference, a spread difference on your broker. Some broker, this is how brokers make money using spread uh, for CFDs and you know commission fees, etc. So keep that in mind. Whenever a signal comes, don't blindly just execute. Try to keep that in mind. Try to look for um, on the chart and try to see the zone that we're signaling and switch between the time frame. So for high time frame, it's usually one hour, two hour, four hour. So switch between them and try to see what that zone is, what that box is. And I explain now in the indicator and why it's super powerful to have the indicator for that. For low time frame, I think we use 15 minute and 30 minute. So you can use switch to the 15 and 30 minute and look at the chart. Okay. So even if you came late to the signal, as I said, as long as 
it doesn't say TP, TP, hit, TP, hit. It doesn't say stop. Uh, it's like it's still a valid signal, even if it's the next day. It doesn't matter. Okay. You might have missed the momentum trade, as I showed you in here. Maybe now here it's a good time to do a momentum trade. But if you came already here, price already in here, so this is not a momentum trade anymore if you came after a few hours. Um, it, it's not even a limit order. It's already hit the price and then went down. So the signal is done already. It, it should have said TP hit, TP hit, TP hit. Well, it's still traded again, but we don't advise that. Usually we advise the first hit or even the second hit max. That's it. Okay. So that's how you look at signals. Before I dive deeper into that and the indicator, anyone has any questions? If it's not the opportunity to... Uh, Ask any questions specifically about signals. No questions means everyone is a is an expert now. Perfect. That's good. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Oh, by the way, is my voice clear? Uh, still clear? Good. You can type one if uh, you can hear me very well. Okay, so we have a few questions. Uh, Ron is asking about the perpetual, yes, for the signal. Well, it's not important, but this is what we're tracking in the algorithm. We're tracking uh, the perpetual ones for now. Uh, and this is why it says SOLSDT.P. Okay, that's the ticker name. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want the exact, to have the exact chart as the algo and the signals, then yes. You use that one. Okay, what other question do we have? Mm. Yeah, as at the end of the day, once you get the the hang of how price forms and you know the different levels, then this is it will be irrelevant which exact chart you're using. Just keep in mind there's price differences between um, any exchange or any broker and on different assets. So you need to keep that in mind. And this is why you need to have an understanding of trading, not just blindly executing anything. Once you have an understanding of what we explained, uh, and once you have the indicator, it will change the way you look at chart. And this is why I'll jump into the indicator now shortly and start going over the indicator. Let me just double check. Have I missed anything regarding signals? Um, Oh yeah, conflicting signals. Now, that's one of the questions that we get sometimes okay. before I jump into the indicator. So let me let me enable our internal uh, algo. Just this is this is not something public. It's just uh, the same algo printing the take profits uh, on Telegram. You'll notice in here that we have a short signal. We have this red box, and I'll go over what, how these are formed and why in the, in the, in the next uh, 20 minutes or so about the indicator. But this is a short signal. You can see so it's a short. So it gave you on Telegram a short signal. I already went to TP. But also there is a long signal in here. So if I go back in here, you will see it's a short and a long signal. Um, and by the way, sometimes this happens. Uh, TradingView has some errors sometimes for indicators. The way to uh, solve it is just to go to settings. To, you can remove it and add it again, or just go to settings and disable, enable any of the uh, of the features, and it will, like this, it will reload, refresh, and then it will work again sometimes. So if you see an error like that, this is how you resolve uh, for any indicator, not just trades AI. Give it some time to do some calculations. Okay, so what I want to explain here is, if I go back in time to here, there was a signal for a long. You'll see it as a green box. Green means long, as I'll explain shortly. And red means short or so. So it's totally fine 
to see conflicting signals on Telegram, meaning you can see buy long signal coming on Solana, and then in a few hours, a short sell signal coming on Solana as well. Okay, it's totally valid because as long as price didn't hit the stop loss, in this case, this is the long. If you go to Telegram, this is one of the signals that came on Solana, on the AVIP maybe, long here, okay? And these are the TPs, this is the stop loss. So it's still valid as a long, as long as we didn't hit this stop loss in here or the final TP, it's still valid. And now you have a sh the short signal we, we were talking about, this one. So now it signaled the short. So again, momentum trade or limit pending trade, we're still valid, long and short. So the short one went to TPs, this is the stop loss for the short, okay? Didn't hit it yet. And then it hit the stop loss after it hit the TPs, so you're in profit. And then still now with the long signal. So it's important to understand that this is how markets move. There are people playing, there are people putting liquidity, betting on price going up. At the same time, hedging, what we call hedging, is betting also at the price going down. So seeing a, a short sell signal on Telegram and then seeing a long uh, buy signal on the same asset does not mean that it canceled the other one. The only time it cancels is if the stop loss is hit, so it's stopped out, or if we're hitting TPs and you decide to exit, and that's it, you end the signal for you. But it's very important to keep in mind. That's it for signals, okay? So what I'll do now is I'll put this aside. I'll come back to it later. And now let's dive, uh, have a let's have a quick uh, tutorial about the trades AI indicator. Okay. So you go to indicators. The way to install the indicator, you go to indicators in here. And then after you subscribed and paid on a website for the Elite Indicator or the Ultimate Bundle, then you uh, you will find the indicator added once we activate it for you within 24 hours. You'll find this Elite Premium Indicator activated with a green lock. If for any reason you've not been granted access, it says red lock, for example. Uh, you can try to log out from Trading View from here, I think, you know, sign out and then log in again and then come here and refresh and then try to again Look for the indicator. If it's still red, not green, then please contact support of Trades AI uh, for help. But usually it takes 24 hours to activate your indicator from the time you buy it. You can find it in the invite only section. So click on the invite only and you'll find it in there. Okay. So you can add it by simply clicking on it. Uh, make sure you read the description of the indicator. We have a very detailed description of the indicator, the different, you know, the algorithms, different aspect of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So make sure you go over that. We also have videos, and hopefully this stream is um, helpful to put you on the right, tra right, right track to use the, um, the indicator. Okay. Uh, make sure you boost the script, please, and favorite uh, the script as well. So make sure you, you. Uh, I think the boost is at the top here, this one. So just boost it, click on this rocket icon. Uh, it also helps us a lot with getting more views uh, for the indicator. So make sure you boost the indicator uh, before you use it. And then add it to your chart by clicking on it, and that's it. So once you add it, it will take some time, as I said, sometimes I show an error. If it shows an error, just try to remove it and add it again, or uh, as I said, go to settings and change any of the settings, disable, enable anything, just so it refreshes um, again. Otherwise, it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds to load for the first time. There you go. So now we have the indicator loaded. And what I'll do now in the coming, hopefully 15, 20 minutes, I'll try to make it quick, is I'll go over what these different lines mean and how to use them to trade with or without the signals, okay? Well, let's start without the signals and then we'll switch back to the signals. Okay, so you go to the settings and given we have the chart on logarithmic, as I explained before, I changed the algo from linear to logarithmic as well. 
is what I like to do. I like to trade on a logarithmic scale. So if I have a logarithmic chart, I switch the algo as well to logarithmic. It will affect the calculations of the different trend lines and different boxes. Okay, so I put it on logarithmic. If you have linear, if you want to use linear chart, keep it linear. You could mix it. You could do linear and logar, but, but it's better to match them. Like if you have a logarithmic chart, make sure you have a logarithmic algorithm. Okay, there's tooltips across everything. If you hover the mouse over these things, they will give you details. As I said, also the description of the indicator has details. And our website, if you go to our website, uh, under the resources section, how to use Trades AI, there's a lot of also videos and stuff like that. Or you could go to our Discord. Please uh, join our Discord. Um, uh, you can find it on our website as well. And uh, there's a lot of helpful uh, charts, signals, information, experiences there. And um, we do some streams as well there. So uh, be it VIP streams or free streams from time to time as well. OK, so tool tips. This is how you understand what each one means. In a nutshell, this section is where you enable or disable the main features. The main three features of the Trades AI Elite Indicator are there are a bunch of indicators combined in one. OK. We have the trend lines, you have the market structure breakouts or MSB, and then you have the OB or ROB, okay? Order blocks and reversal order blocks. I'll disable everything and start with these because we already explained what order blocks is you know, with ladders and aggressive moves and all that. So I'll focus on this for now. In fact, let me disable the reversal ones, the ROB ones, which are our proprietary uh, kind of algorithm, I would say. Um, let's focus on peaks and valleys, OBs. Okay, give it some time to reload. Okay, so these are the OBs on my chart. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a four hour chart maybe to make it a bit. Uh, to see a mix of uh, red and green. Okay, so red means short or sell opportunities, order blocks. Green means buy opportunities, order blocks. Okay, and they match what we explained in terms of the ladders. Remember when I said the ladder goes up, ladder goes up. So it's the last candle, or the it's not just the last candle. It's the zone, the 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 drop, the valley before the move. It will draw it for that zone including the last candle, OK? Uh, so if it's just one candle, it's just one candle. If it's multiple candles, like this one in here, for example, it's multiple candles. So it will draw the whole zone. OK, if I go back in time to here, just to demonstrate what I mean. So price went down, did a valley, and then went up. So as you can see, it's like the whole zone, OK? From here to here, OK? So we'll have the order block, which is the last candle. As I explained, it's called the order block and the zone, the sequence of bearish candles connected to it, the whole zone, okay? In the settings, we're not gonna go over all settings, but in the settings, if you go to the zone formation and validation, peaks and valleys, you can customize all that. Customize if you want single candles, multiple candles, um, a lot of other things, and how many can, how many peaks and valleys to show on the chart, et cetera, et cetera, and how long to keep them on the chart. So. Uh, you can find all these details in our tutorials on our website. You go to how to use the indicator and join our Discord. Obviously, there's a lot of information, but we have detailed uh, information. Uh, feel free to reach the support at Trades AI if you want more information on how to use these different settings as well. Play around with it uh, with each single uh, settings and see how it changes the chart for you. But the default settings are good enough to, uh, to start trading. So a simple way of looking at this is whenever I see a green step, it means it's laddering up, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy here. When price comes back to it, buy, price went up. If price comes back to here, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy. Red means sell, okay? Well, price here went down, went up, sell in this region from here, sell. So it hit it, then went down. Same with here. Hit it, went down, etc., cetera, et cetera. So this is the easiest way to uh, use OBs. Now, our OBs are failed OBs. Let's keep it simple this way, which means 
it's an OB that didn't do that in that reaction eventually. So instead of like a green OB, for example, or a red OB that was supposed to catch price and go down, but instead of that, it went up and closed beyond it, it turns into green from red to green. It turns from a red peak OB into a green uh, peak ROB. That's in a simple terms, okay? What ROBRs, uh, what ROBs are. So what I like to do on my charts is I, most of the time I disable the value OB and peak OB and I just keep the peak ROB and value ROB. They're uh, stronger inflection points to trade. Um, doesn't mean the, the OBs don't work. It's just my way of trading. I prefer to look at ROBs or ROBs uh, versus just OBs. This is how a ROB looks like, okay? Uh, you can trust the algorithm. <laughs> it's giving you very accurate levels. So as you can see, they're super accurate. Price touched it, went up, touched it, went up, touched it, went up, okay? They're very strong. Now we're in the short uh, ROB in here. Now, all right, maybe I was in replay mode, one second. Let's see what ROBs we have right now, okay? There you go. See, there was a green ROB in here that already got hit and went up and now hit it another time, went up. So how do I trade this? Well, this is where you buy or long. Where do I put my stop loss? It depends. Some people put it at the end of the zone. Some people put it at the end of the pivot in here. There's like zone in here. Um, or you just follow the signals that are coming on Telegram and giving you a stop loss. But in general, whenever you see a green box on the indicator, it's where you can buy. Whenever you see a red box or a red line, it's when you short. So, or if I'm in a buy and price is approaching this zone, I might want to exit my buy because I expect price to go down from here, for example. Okay. You can take it one or one time or multiple times. So I might like this one in here, it hit it here and went up. And this is the second time, hit it again and went up. So usually we just do a max of two times uh, for the signals, it's just the first touch, but it's totally valid to take them multiple times. Again, it's all about the general context, looking at the general trend. So here I'm looking at the, uh, what I what, what we learned in this session is I wanna identify the trend of the time frame. This is a four hour time frame. Let's say I have a bullish trend, it's going up going up it's doing higher high higher high higher low higher high so i'm going to look for a buying opportunity so i'm going to buy every green box let's say for example and put my stop loss below it or below that pivot point like this is the green box for example showing me i'll put my stop loss here for example or i put it here it depends uh, and then my tp could be one to one could be two to one three to one ten to one totally up to you and how you want to do your risk management obviously the higher TP you want to target, the riskier it is because it's you're waiting longer in the market and market might not go there and then switch and end up making you lose that position. So I try to always aim for one to one and above. So if you put your stop loss in here and your entry is in this box in here, try to exit at least here. Uh, you could go for two to one, 1.51. 1 1. Uh, but yeah, try to do one to one, 0 0.8 to one, but try to avoid doing two uh, like low of a TP and big of a stop loss. So that when you lose, you don't want to lose big and win small because then one loss wipes out many wins for you. So always make sure it's a balanced kind of ratio between the loss and the profit. Okay, so that's what a ROB is. Uh, again, the details in the tutorials, there's a lot of information and feel free to reach out to us if you need more information, but there's a lot of videos and tutorials that you can use. Now let me disable ROBs, enable MSVs. Uh, again, there's a lot of settings you can change in here for the colors and everything, for everything, for the ROBs and MSVs and trend lines. So feel free to play around with all of these uh, settings. What is an MSV? Again, we explain it in a nutshell. Let me go to Bitcoin. I have an interesting MSV that you can clearly see how, how our indicator caught uh, the, the dump and the, the pump of, of uh, Bitcoin. Let me see if I can find it somewhere. Maybe I'll replay right here. There you go. So that's what we call an MSB. You see them on the chart sometime. And it's like dotted lines like this. And then green line like this. So this is called a bearish MSB. Another way of looking at it is it's a double top. One of the principles 
we didn't discuss earlier is chart patterns. So traders usually try uh, to look for chart patterns. Uh, and whenever they spot such a pattern, they predict the market to move in a specific direction. The main patterns that people usually look for are the double top, something like this. Whether this is higher than this, whether this is lower than, 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 than this, whether they're exactly the same, it's irrelevant. It's called a double top. Usually it's lower. So usually it's like this, like this, and then like this. Okay. And this is called the neckline. This is the neckline, and this is double top. Okay. Or it could be a double bottom, a W, okay, like this. Okay. And this is the neckline. It's a double bottom. Sometimes it could be a triple top. Some people call it head and shoulder, like this. Okay. Or a triple bottom, like this. Again. The reverse, uh, an inverse head and shoulder. It's like a head here, and two, and a, we have a shoulder and shoulder here. So keep things in my, these in mind whenever you spot them on the chart. You expect most of the time the move happens on the high time frame. You spot them in the high time frame. Most probably the move will happen in that direction. So let's keep this one. This is a double top. You can see it in here. So you see this double top in here. So price did it like this. Uh, that's, uh, like this is what we call a an MSV on the algorithm. So it automatically drew it for you and it gave you the target where the price will go expected from this using different calculations. And the way it calculates this is way different than what people usually use for this. Uh, but the simple way of doing this, you measure this distance of the M and then you say the same distance is gonna be the drop, okay? Uh, but our algorithm uses different ways and different variables to give you these targets. These are called targets. MSD targets, this one and this one. So what you want to do when you see MSD, a market structure breakout, you can, if it's red like this, like an M, you can short here and then close your short sell here and profit. Where do you put your stop loss? You can put it in here, the second top. So this is the top, this is the top. You can put it somewhere here. You can put it somewhere here if you want, but that's a bigger stop loss, which means for the one-to-one, -one, you need to target a bigger one-to-one. Personally, I like to put it in here, um, and that's it. So you could short and then exit in here. Or, and you could also long buy at these spots, the targets, because there's a lot of liquidity that will be executed here. People who are exiting their short here, that's an opportunity for you to ride it up. And that's literally how our indicator, Trades AI Elite Indicator, caught Bitcoin's top exactly and the bottom. So if you could see, it hit exactly the target. And as I said, I shorted from here, but I also I longed from here. And you'll notice that price literally on the weekly chart for BTC USD index went up from there. Okay, you see the interaction. So they if you bought 15,800 or something like that, you caught the bottom using our indicator. And now it, it even made a new all-time high. Okay. And if I switch to the monthly chart, I think it even caught the top, as you can see. Bitcoin from $3,000 even, I draw this MSB, bullish MSB, so like a W, I guess like this, like this, okay? So it caught this, and then it went literally, caught the top for the drop from around $70,000 or $65,000 caught it twice, this one and that one. Okay, this is months of like, you know, since 2019, so we're talking about years and months, but this is how powerful these tools are. So I could have bought in here Bitcoin as soon as this signaled here, I could have bought Bitcoin at 20K or 18K, put my take profits in here, for example, at targets, put my stop loss in here, and then whenever it hit them, I'm out of my short, uh, my long, sorry, and then I would short sell the market here and then also uh, write it down. Where do I put my stop loss in this case for these lines? I usually put it like the same distance. So I, whatever the line, the two lines are, I measure the distance and do the same in here, for example, roughly. Again, it depends on where you want to put your stop loss if you're not using signals, but if you're using signals, it gives you all these, usually all these values um, where you want to enter and exit and all that stop loss and take profit. That's what an MSB is. Uh, now, before I dive into trend lines, which is the final thing in today's stream, uh, before we 
we do an example execution of a trade uh, on Trade Locker. If anyone has any questions, let me check the chat very quickly. Anyone has any questions? All good? Okay, perfect. Okay, let's just pause for a few seconds before I dive deeper into trend lines and trade locker. Okay, so let's keep going with the stream. So now what I'll do is I'll explain trend lines, and then we jump into how to execute trades using trades AI signals indicator on any exchange. Okay, let's now go to the settings and activate trend lines. And I'll disable MSP, just have trend lines. Give it some time. There you go. So this is the monthly Bitcoin chart trend lines. What we're looking at is dashed trend lines. So there is a difference between when you see a dashed trend line and a solid trend line. The difference is trend lines start as being solid. And then when they break, they turn into what we call backside trend line, dashed. The basic principle is simply the following. When price is laddering or going up, it's an uptrend. Okay, so it's going up, going up, going up. And then at one point, it breaks, it closes, or hard closes, which is open and close here. This trend is lost. So we're not in an uptrend anymore. It turns into, so it was a support, 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 buy, buy, buy. It was green. If you were play in here, you'll notice that that trend line was green, as you could see, it was a support trend line you buy at each touch you buy at each touch okay then it breaks and it turns into a red trend line backside okay let me just go i think here this will make it a red there you go so now it's a red dashed backside which means I'm not gonna buy it anymore. I'm gonna sell at it or short at it. So next time price comes to it, I'm gonna short. I know if price I think never went up that, to that trend line, maybe it dropped after. Yeah, I don't think it went up there, yeah. So now it's approaching it in the future. See, it's still valid. So this is Bitcoin. So if price comes near the trend line, which is if Bitcoin comes to like maybe above $120,000, or uh, $150,000, etc. So this is the any anywhere on this trend line, whenever it touches it, I'm gonna sell or short. Okay, again, stop loss depends on risk management, could be a ratio, could be I'm using some other theory that we explained, some other block on the indicator, but that's how you do use trend lines. So I was buying, 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 whenever it broke, red becomes selling, selling, selling. Okay. Now, sell doesn't mean it will just break to the next one, but it means it will drop from it. How big of a drop or how big of a bounce, we never know. This is why you use risk management and always try to get profits, take partial profits from any bounce or any move, uh, and, and then you can move your stop loss to break even, for example. You don't need to keep your stop loss at the same place. So let's say price moved and you took half of your position, for example, you closed half of your position in profit, you can move your stop loss to break even. So if price ends up going back to your entry, you exit at break even, but you already took some profit um, from the market. So this is how you can use moving your stop loss to break even, um, or you could put it and forget it and then just stick to, to your stop loss and the TP plan as you decided from when, whenever you formed the trade setup or formed the trade idea. But that's the uh, that's the um, the general sense of how to use trend lines and what's the difference between solid and dashed. 
every time frame will have different um, trend lines. Make sure you always check different time frames. This is something I can't stress enough. Always try to look for uh, different time frames and create your your setup idea accordingly. So instead of just you can still focus on one time frame and say I'm just going to trade the 15 minute, but it's always helpful to look for two time frames above. And the time frames we used usually just to keep things simple for you. Well, there's the one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 50 minute, one hour, two hour, four hour, and then you have the eight hour, 12 hour one day, one week, one month. In general, most people use these. Well, most people use 1, 5, 15, 31, and then they use 4, and then they use one day, weekly, and monthly. Okay? So feel free to check all of them. Whenever you're deciding to enter a trade, whether it came from a signal or not, try to check enable indicator and look. take a look at all the charts, all these different time frames. Because sometimes you might find that a big drop might be coming for Bitcoin. Like let's say here, Bitcoin is so close to the trend line weekly. Okay, it's so close to the weekly trend line, which means that even came near it and even dropped from it. To be honest with you, it came so close to it, so it, it's a valid. Practically, it's almost a touch. So, on the weekly, this is how it looks like. But if you're on the monthly, you might say, "Well, we're still far away from the trend line." So price might actually still go up and hit that trend line. You know? Or it might never. But at least you might not know why price did a specific specific move on your time frame. There's nothing in here. There's no trend line. But if you switch to the weekly, ah, that's why it came close to this trend line, near backside trend line. So this is where it's very important um, uh, to mesh different time frames on top of each other. And this is why I said, the layout functionality and trading view is important because it allows you to easily see all these different time frames for the same asset without the need to switch between them and change all that. Okay, so that's the time frame feature or algorithm. What you want to do is you want to enable everything if you want in the indicator or pick and choose whatever is more comfortable for you to trade. Some people just trade the trend lines and trades AI are very powerful. Some people trade only the MSP, some people trade the OBs, the ROBs, or you can enable all of them. I like to enable these, uh, Trendline, MSP, ROB, Valley, and ROB Peak. And literally, whatever green box or line I see, like a trend line or box, whatever I buy or lock, whatever red, I sell or short. So if price came here, for example, this is a box, I would buy. If where would I put my stop loss? Where put it at the end of the box, or even at the end of this pivot in here, which is inside the box. Like this is the box region, so this is the lowest point. I'm gonna long here, put the stop loss here. I'm gonna long here as well because these are solid lines I see. So I'm gonna long here, put the stop loss here. Uh, I might ignore these other two lines. It's just the whole region is considered one, but I like to enter at the first line, and if the box extended, sometimes you'll see the box extending, so I'll enter also at the box. So just make sure always your stop loss is for ROBs at the nearest pivot, for example, this year, or the box, slightly below it, okay? And then you put your take profit accordingly. Same with here, notice how price went up, hit the box in here, and then went up, hit the box in here, and went up, and now we're here. If you play live, see how Bitcoin was playing on the weekly. Our indicator really caught a lot of interesting moves uh, for Bitcoin. Okay, keep in mind this is a weekly chart. So each small move is like a big, big move. Like this is from here to here is like a 4% move. So if you trade, whether with leverage or no leverage, these are big moves uh, week to week. Okay, so notice how this box was hit and the price went up. Hit, price went up. Okay, there's the box, we'll go hit it, went up. Even the slight simple moves, hit it, went up. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of how to use these different boxes. So these are ROBs, I uh, we went over everything, went over the trend lines, the backside trend line, the MSPs, these are little lines. So now when I look at the chart using the indicator, I'm on the weekly chart, I have an idea. We are on the weekly on an uptrend, so Bitcoin is still bullish and I want to buy 
every green box. I might short sell the red box, but I want to be careful because it might break it easily. So I'm going to put my stop loss very near. I'm not going to put it like far away or like risk too much. I'm going to risk maybe 0.5% of my account in the short because what if it went down? I made money. But if it went up and it, because it's an uptrend, might be very aggressive as an uptrend, the market is bullish. So I'm not going to lose much. In fact, if we look at this one in here, for example, red went down. Okay, so it, it, we are in an uptrend, but even the red boxes gave us nice moves. Cautiously, we're going to be cautious with these. See, that was a nice move. It broke it now. See, so it does give you usually the first touch is very, very strong. Second touch works as well, but you got to be very careful when you go against the trend, like this one in here, for example. It was against the trend, it's an uptrend, we're so going aggressively up. So that one, final one was maybe didn't give you, if you entered in the middle or at the end, it was a profit, but it hit the stop loss. It went slightly above the stop loss in here and then went down. So it's all probabilities. Keep that in mind. Uh, risk management is very important. Now let's switch to trade locker and show you how you execute trades. Um, I'm going to try to finish this stream uh, just at, in, in 15 more minutes just to make sure we uh, we have enough time for questions and answers. Again, I'm sorry, I tried to squeeze a lot of information and knowledge for you guys. I assume some people are beginners, almost beginners, some people are professional. I try to squeeze as much as I can in the stream. We can always do future streams uh, for VIP members as well as for free members to make sure the community is uh, well educated and we're helping each other. Uh, and learning how to trade and be profitable in these markets. Okay, so this is Bitcoin. Let me switch to Solana. I think I was having a, I was trying something on Solana. Yeah. Okay, so this is the signal. So the way I use the signal with the indicator is very simply. The signal comes in, it's HTF trade on VIP, high time frame. I said high time frame means one hour, two hour, or four hour for now. So I have my indicator on and I'll just look at the one hour. So the signal here was saying uh, it came at 8 p.m. So I can go back in time if I want. Look at what, you know, 8 p.m. in my time was like here. I already explained the signal. It was uh, somewhere here, I think. Yeah, this one. So whenever I see the signal, I look at the chart with my indicator on. If I have the indicator subscription and I'll see the, the zone and I'll know what this zone is referring to. So this one was here. So I go back in time if I can, and I'll see the box. So it's a an ROB signal. So you'll see it in a minute, I think. Still loading. Yeah, so this is the long signal. It was the short signal, this one. So as you can see, I see the box in here. So I'll see the signal, one, three, two. I put my mouse on the, on the box, one, three, two. Yep, that's the box. It's 8 p.m. my time, this. So this is the box. This is the signal that came. So I know by looking at the chart, I know like this is the region we're supposed to short. Well, there's also a trend line, which makes me more confident that we have a downtrend. So I can start shorting from here, short here. Like this is a whole zone to short. So I'm going to be confident when shorting. There you go. It's a very strong reaction. This is how you mesh the indicator with the signals. And this is why it's very important to have your indicator on the charts. Let's say I didn't find the box uh, matching the signal. I might go to the two hour time frame. Like, is there something at two hour? Maybe the four hour. I'll switch to the four hour. Like I'll try, I'll try to find the general boxes and trend lines and just build a theory, build a story of a trade setup. Like on the four hour, for example, will I have an uptrend? Okay, so on the four hour, Solana is bullish. It even hit these backsides. It hit this backside in here. I went up. Now it's bullish. So it's it's bullish in here. So I'm not gonna on the lower time frame, I'm not gonna be aggressive with my shorts. I'm gonna I wanna be careful because we're going on an uptrend on the trend on the trend line. Okay. So this is what's happening now. So line on the four hour is going up, for example. So it's all opportunities, it's all probabilities, it's all put your entry, you see a box. You see the lines, put the entry here, 
put your stop loss somewhere here, 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 like pick a place where you think it's reasonable to invalidate your trade. Uh, we have a box, we have a trend line. Well, I'm gonna put it maybe here. I don't need to put my stop loss exactly here. Even if the signal says put your stop loss here, well, I have the indicator, it gives me more power to decide. So I have trend lines in here. So how about we put the stop loss in here, for example, below this point? Because if price went up there and went down there, then this whole thing is invalid and we're not we're not we're gonna dump maybe to here or maybe even lower. So this is how I start building the story. And this is how you look for these zones and look for these lines and mesh them up, mesh different time frames, and decide. Uh, before I jump into trade locker and execute a, an example trade to wrap up, let me check if anyone has any questions. Okay. Perfect. So now let's jump into the final section of this uh, stream and do a live example of executing an actual trade. So let's actually execute this trade, which was on the one hour Solana. Well, I mean, this is an all trade. I just wanna, um, just wanna use it as an example. Um, please Google or, or check YouTube for things like position sizing, how to calculate lot size. If you're using brokers that use lot sizes, if you're using crypto exchanges, look for how to use uh, position sizing, how to use leverage. If you're not using leverage, it's totally up to you. Again, it's not financial advice. It's high risk to use leverage trading in general, but it's totally up to you. Uh, but make sure you understand when I say size your position, calculate your lot size, you make sure you understand what that means. Um, now, why I'm using Trade Locker here? Because it has a very powerful tool to make life easier for you to do that calculation. So if I switch to Solana in here, this is a demo uh, account that I have in here. So this is Solana, okay? And this is how a Trade Locker account looks like. A lot of prop firms use Trade Locker as, an ex as a platform. It's super powerful, one of our partner um uh sister companies um it's very powerful when it comes to um risk management and the way to execute trades from trades ai indicator or signals is as following so take the the signal so there's the signal and the numbers so write them down or copy them or something and then uh find these levels on the chart, keeping in mind, there might be price differences between that chart and this chart, but using the indicator and the boxes and the trend lines, at least you will know a point of reference. So you'll know that there's an uptrend between this and this, okay? This candle and that candle. Doesn't need, and this is the one hour chart. Doesn't need to be exact price, like the price here might be one, two, six, six, nine, go here. Maybe try to find that candle. Let me double check which candle that is. Okay. There might be a difference, as you can see. There might be a difference in, in, in when it comes to execution. But point is the zone, the area. Okay. So try to let's say let's let's find that box specifically. So as an example, maybe this one in here. So this short signal came at 8 p.m. This one. So the entry was 132.66 on this chart. Oh, let me just quickly enable and disable something in here. We have that error appearing. And then if I go back at 8 p.m., what was, I think, I think I have it. Uh, Right down, would be somewhere here. Yeah, this one in here, okay? This one in here, this is the same region, 8 p.m. Okay, this is the 8 p.m. So the signal came and saying short in this region, which is 13266. So I'm gonna find that region, 132, 13266. So this is, this is almost the region, okay? 
So I'm gonna short here. I don't need to wait for the exact touch. As long as the price is near it, um, I'll just enter a short, a market short, or I'll place a limit order in here in this in this zone. And it's saying to put my stop loss around 138.27. So I'll see what that is, 138.136. One three one three eight twenty seven. So one three eight, eight twenty seven. Yeah, somewhere like around here. It's, so I'm gonna put it around this zone here. Doesn't need to be exact price. It's like it's telling me use this pivot pretty much. With the indicator, I can easily understand what it's referring to as a stop loss in TP because I can mesh that um, over the uh, you know, the uh, the chart. And that's it. So I am, I'm going to enter here, for example. I'm going to put my stop loss here. Or sorry, I'm going to enter. Uh, yeah, I'm going to enter here, put my stop loss here, and then take a TP here, for example. How to do that? I'll use the risk calculator on trade blocker. So I'll switch to limit pending order if I want a limit pending order. If I want a market momentum trade, I'll keep it on market and just execute a sell. Uh, for this example, I'm doing a limit pending order. I'll enable the risk calculator. And click on SL and TP. And this is how powerful this tool is because it allows me to easily switch. Well, I'll switch to sell. It's a sell order. We're going to short or sell. And then I can decide how much I want to risk. So remember that calculation about don't risk more than $100 if your account is, is, is like 1000 or whatever it is, or don't risk more, more than, don't risk more than $10. Uh, this allows you to easily type that number. So let's say I have a, in this account, let's say I have $60,000 and I just don't want to risk more than 1% of that account. So $60,000, what's 1% of that? You could use the calculator or just quickly uh, calculate that. So you're just going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, let's say, for example, for simplicity, I'm not going to lose more than um, $600 in, in this position, for example. Okay, that's it. So this is how much you're risking. It's saying it's almost 1% of your balance. So it shows you how much. You're going to risk of your balance, and 600 is one percent of that balance, and it automatically calculates the size for you, the lot size, as you can see, uh, because this uses leverage in this specific case. So it's doing some division and multiplication to calculate the lot size for you. So you can easily say how much you want to risk, and it will do the math for you. If you don't have a tool like this, if you don't have Trade Locker, then you need to just Google how to. Uh, uh, to size your position, how to calculate lot size, how to using stop loss. And there's a lot of tutorials online on how to, like the formula to use to position, uh, to size your position. Always make sure whatever number you put, let's say you're trading on Binance, Bybit for crypto and you use isolated margin, whatever number you put for the size and the leverage, the combination, look at your liquidation price, make sure it's matching your stop loss, not before it. So if it's matching it, then you did the the math right and you size your position the right way okay or if you use trade locker it's so simple so straightforward just say i don't want to lose more than six hundred dollar in this trade that's it and then you move your stop loss wherever you want and notice how the lot size is changing the calculation of the lot size is changing see based on what how i'm moving things it's automatically doing the math redoing it and changing everything for you and that's it you hit sell and that this limit order would be placed and you forget it. You come back to it. If price came back to it, hit it. It's on active position. And then if it went to your TP, it would exit in profit, went to your SL, stop loss, it exit in loss. That's it uh, for today's stream. I know it was a two, two, uh, two hours and a half, I think, but I tried to jam as much as possible uh, in this stream. We touched on basics. We touched on intermediate subjects. We touched on advanced subjects very quickly uh, again uh, i've used many and most of what could uh, be possibly used in these markets i've built a lot of bots before a lot of algorithm i've traded a lot um, obviously you win a lot you lose a lot what you learn is risk management is very important and this is why i ended this stream with risk management something like this feature is super crucial for you because then you can easily take the signals and take the levels on the indicator. Let's say this one in here. You want to enter in here. You want to put your stop loss in here. And then you want to take profit in here, like one to one. Okay? Just go there. Find that area on your chart equivalent to that. And then execute using the tool. Put, you know, you want to, I don't want to risk more than $600, like 1%, or maybe half of it. Maybe just 0.5% of my account, $300. 
put the entry, put the stop loss, put the take profit, and that's it. Uh, now we have a few minutes for question and answer. And given we're wrapping up the uh, session, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. Um, Okay, so if no one has any questions, uh, I think I tried to address some of the questions during the uh, stream. Let's wait for a few more minutes and then we'll wrap up this, this session. Okay, so thanks again, everyone, for joining today. Uh, I think there will be a recording of this session anyway. Feel free to uh, rewatch any segments of it. And uh, please join our Discord. Uh, you can find it on our website. If you scroll down, you'll find the link to our Discord. And um, feel free to reach out to us uh, at support at tradesai.com. Uh, I'm also active on, uh, on Discord and uh, on Telegram. So feel free to reach out if you have any uh, comments or questions. I try to reply to as many uh, people, people as possible. Okay, perfect. Thank you and have a good one. Trade responsibly. Don't take too much risk. Have a good one.